I was in the middle of a very deep conversation with some of them about world travel, and I kind of sidetracked us to some people that we just got done talking with that I edited out that are from Istanbul, and we started talking about the Anwatrap and how his voice for things and and other things I've done in intelligence around the world and humanitarian stuff I've done with the diplomatic embassies of Turkey here in Los Angeles as well as Turkey in the country in Istanbul and other regions and diplomatic missions and other things on behalf of the White House, my government, humanity, etc. And by the way, Aziz Hajar at NTV and Deutsche Media Center, where I've been the voice for many things over the years there, for Deutsche Media Group and for and TV and for Turkish government and parliament, etc. And for many other countries, for many years. Surprise, yes, that's me. Even in Pakistan. For more intel than anyone could ever fucking imagine. So if I tell you worldwide intel has been breached because I've read something from Russia, Pakistan, Turkey, Bangladesh, and I know security is breached. I would know it better than DOD, State Department, or anything else on the motherfucking planet because they hacked into my intranet server set up by the CIA and John Basuski, who was the White House attache to Moscow, who was a guy in the jump seat who they unlocked at the Kremlin, who stayed an extra five years because they sent to the CIA a recruitment letter for him to become a double agent, which he already was. Oops, did I let the cat out of the bag, John? John has always been back to a spy for Russia. Lizuski. <laughs> Figure out the name changes over the generations, and we can do math. And the equation was as clear as Notre Dame, right, John Boy? It's all like a sports game to you. The art of winning, the art of gladiators. The art of annihilation. We haven't learned since Genghis Khan that slaughter isn't the answer, have we, John? Or have some of us and the rest of you failed us in the military complex that Eisenhower so boldly warned us about? That people like you and Bush and Cheney helped silence with the Kennedys about the secret societies and organizations like Illuminati and Ku Klux Klan. And Satanism and other cultish behaviors that predicate society, even Christianity based on paganism and Illuminati agendas, even the falseness of the Roman Catholic Church and altar boys for thousands of years being in cardinal doctrine as making them stronger by violating them as children. For what? The next war? The next IRS collector, the next bill payer, what did that make them stronger for in life when you already violated the child so badly that they were shaking in fear of God and pissing their pants at your voice, knowing that was about to happen again? As they heard the Velcro onto or something else, a button on snap, a certain key sound that meant it's now time. Hear my toy again. And not being able to tell mommy and daddy or anybody else because it was our dirty little secret with God. And it was God's will or whatever. Whatever it took to break that child at that age. How heinous is that? Now for those of you who are already ill, that's only the tip of the iceberg of what we've been conditioned through time to accept as the norm, to judge others, to judge ourselves, to be harsh with everybody, to keep people out, to exclude over race, color, creed, over obesity, gender, transgender, I'm better than you, I'm not, you're everything, oh my God, you are my God, you're my idol, and bling bling bullshit. We've gone beyond Babylon, we went to Babylon and back asswards. You've heard the people on the street screaming and saying, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not because they're Chinese or Japanese. It's because they're out of their fucking mind. Because of the toxins they've swallowed out of the trash can trying to find food, or the shit they just shot or snorted because they found a molecule that might be oxidol, but it could also be a grain of grass. And they ate it just because they needed their next fix. They didn't get their allowance. 
They had help along the way. They're not all to blame. And who are you to judge? And how many of you ever tried to help? And have you ever helped any? Successfully? Do you even know the difference between help and enabling? Or between drowning them deeper in their pool of blood? Even though you didn't pull the trigger. Or shoot the knife. Or inject the last hit that was fatal. Except with your words that cut like a knife. Have I been known to be gentle and compassionate? Ask any of the women or men who really know Kurt. And if they ever say I've taken anything from them, have been unjust, or hurt them in any way that wasn't justified, or beyond, then you don't know anybody who's being honest about me, that's for sure. Because those who know you best will be honest and tell you your fails. And my biggest failure, according to those who know me best, is I don't stop giving. I give too much, and I should have stopped giving a long time ago and said, fuck all of you, and became a private, recluse, multi-trillion, uh, just let the world run riot. Um, that was never the intent of any technology I brought forward or anything I've helped innovate or pioneer or research or develop. It was always intended for the good will of all, for the improvement of society. It wasn't so I could be in altered states and be suspended and numbed from reality and so I could enhance and see alternate realities that exist in parallel times and universes that others haven't been gifted to see. And for that I've been criticized for being an idiot, for talking out of my ass, for being a liar, for being full of shit, because I see and tell truths that others don't want to witness, don't want to believe, don't want to told, have their own agendas, or editorial replies, and yet, are they truths? Or are they your prejudice truths? And at the end of time, who will still be sitting in the light? And who will be peering in the full circuit, trying to say, but what about me? I've never worried about what about me, I've always put others first. Even if it's to give you the last shirt off my back why I phrased it this that evening so you could stay alive. I knew I would endure and find a way back from death or life or whatever it was meant to be for a greater purpose. It was never about me getting the last breath, the last word, but it was about being honest. And if you were talking over me and not listening or being abusive, I may have gotten louder. May have accelerated, may have intensified, may have wrecked your soul with things I said. But in every moment, in that moment, it was honest and true. What I was feeling in the moment. I know I said feeling, oh how tragic a man who feels. Beast. On the empirical knowledge that I've already evidenced with you, witnessed with you. Picked up from your aura, your essence, your hidden agendas, your intent, your eye contact, your lack of focus, dysfunction, or whatever our impairment in the relationship might have been, perceived or otherwise. Anyone who says I don't go out of my way to try and help compensate those who have done well by me. They'll have to answer for their lies. Let's just leave it at that. Have I been falsely incarcerated, beaten, robbed, abused, tortured, and maligned? Witnessed more death than near death. I've been through experiences that most would never have endured through many lifetimes. More than once, more than a hundred times. It's no exaggeration when I say so many countless times, it's not even worth trying to recall them all. Because from infinity to infinity, each one of you who did that offense with me, all brothers were sleeping, because I never sleep, hardly ever, if you know me well. I was out doing and trying to help somebody or figure out some situation or 
the next psychodrama I would have to deal with in life while you rolled up on me and took unfair advantage. And many times they let you take that unfair advantage even when it could have stopped you. Because again, it's about free will. It's not about my will to have my shit. It's about the intent of whose will overpowered and what was for the greater good. Your selfishness, your addiction, or because you desperately needed it more than I did. And so it allowed you to rob me and take what I said no more. When I cried enough, or when you beat me with lead pipes and I lay bleeding out, or you electrocuted or drowned me or shot me or overdosed me, right, Ralph Reichman? There are some things I won't forget from the journey and until you make your pay for them. Well, I may have forgiven you for being the asshole you are. It still doesn't diminish the sin and the overall essence of your bullshit. See, free will run riot is the worst addiction. Narcissism vile sewage of any kind. When your will run riot gives you the right to violate and destroy what is not yours to take. If it's not for food and sustain it as part of the food chain, but it's for sport or destruction. Stop for a second. Ask yourself, how much of this do I create that I actually own that I can just blow up and there'll never be a consequence forever and ever in that? If you're willing to accept that those consequences have other consequences, and it's the sum total of your essence of purity or lack of it, that from infinity to infinity will determine your outcome in the final light to beyond infinity that you haven't even comprehended yet that you'll even begin to grasp the magnitude of how bad an eternity of darkness and sewage and violence can be. Because that will never get out again. Once it's sealed, when hell freezes over for eternity, none of you parasites get to come back. That's where you fucked up. <laughs>